from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. We're back in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE and we're wrapping up day one. Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman, John Furrier, and Jim Kabilis is joining us. Welcome, thanks for watching. Let's see, start with Stu. Big news today, Amazon, RDS, on-prem. They made the move, David Floyer predicted it. Your thoughts? Yeah, so we, we talked a little bit on, on our keynote analysis this morning, Dave, but definitely it was what uh, got everybody in the audience really excited. Uh, this is a partnership, right? And, and, and I want to emphasize that because when the announcement was first made, it was, you know, Amazon's the gorilla, they have all the strength, and look, VMware's got over 500,000 customers, they have strong relationships with customers, um, this is not just a one-way move to the cloud, and this is a great proof point, you know, RDS in this solution, and there's a lot of pieces here. NSX with Direct Connect, there's so many pieces in here that uh, this is an important partnership, and not the only partnership that VMware has in the cloud. Uh, we heard uh, it was, you know, Yen Bing Li was just on uh, with us, Dave, talking about the cultural shift, the engineering shift to get more CICD uh, cloud first. David Floyer had written in an article leading up to this, VMware needs to be more cloud first and you hear it from the VMware people that there is cultural change, they are changing their development, and you know, that Amazon pull uh, is uh, going to have a dramatic impact. Hi, right, John Furrier, you've seen all the waves, you've seen the legacy guys try to cross the chasm, you've seen some succeed, some fail, you have deep into AWS, into the developer ecosystems, Google Next, et cetera, et cetera. The AWS VMware relationship, is it a one-way trip to the cloud, or is it a boon for the data center? Good question, I think first of all, the Amazon news with RDS on, on VMware on-premises is earth shattering news at many levels. One, Amazon's never done it before. Two, I think people are going to start to understand this downstream a little bit later, but it's going to have a significant impact on, on the opportunities in multi-cloud. So, you know, I think Amazon's relationship with VMware is very deep at the level of technology and, and stakeholders at the top of the, both companies. A Andy Jassy, and Pat Gelsinger are both in this to win it together. It's obvious, and anyone who says otherwise really isn't really informed. They're deep in the technical side. They have management at the top approving this. They're going to market together in the field. There is legit synergy, and they're going to win the long game. is making the big bet, and remember, three years ago, Pat Gelsinger was under the gun. You know, what's his role going to be? People were you know, nervous about their cloud. Look at VMware botched the cloud. Okay? And they're kicking ass right now with cloud. So they made the right moves, they steered the ship away from the rocks, they're out in the clear sailing, love their strategy. Uh, keynote with Gelsinger was very specifically around the generational shift around VMware and the industry. He went through the, the, uh, the bridging, and I love the cleverness of the, of the storytelling, bridging tech trends has been a VMware ethos. He talked about the history, servers, ESX, BYOD, workspace, network, NSX, cloud migration. That was their kind of initial private cloud, but right now it's multi-cloud and profit and people doing tech for good. So I think Gelsinger is laying down the generational shift that VMware is going for, and they're making the huge bet on AWS. So it begs the question, what about Azure? What about Google? Is VMware going to be a one cloud game? Are they going to bridge to other clouds? That's going to be a very interesting tell sign because the relationship on stage with Andy Jassy and Pat Gelsinger is pretty significant. I think it's going to be a hard thing to go in to other clouds saying, I want to date you too. Yeah, <laughs> it's very interesting. <laughs> all, of course, all the legacy guys are trying to figure out, okay, their cloud strategies, but now all the major cloud guys are betting on-prem. We saw at Google Next, the on-prem strategy, was certainly Azure with Azure Stack. Oracle has bets in cloud, and with cloud at customers, got bets for on-prem. Now AWS throws its hat in the ring. Jim Kabilis, you sat into the, in the analyst sessions all day. What did you learn? What were your big takeaways? What do we need to know? Well, first of all, uh, it's clear that the AWS partnership, VMware is all in with that. Look at the past year since they announced in terms of customer adoption, partner enablement, the, the sheer uh, variety and depth of the integrations that these partners have put together, including today, it's, uh, it's pretty serious in terms of VMware's uh, investment in that relationship, deepening that to the point where there are no splashy Google partnership announcements or IBM or Oracle or anybody else. It's clear that it's, they're really 
They are each other's hybrid cloud partner par excellence. I don't think either of them is going to, uh, I don't think the VMware is going to go anywhere near as deep with the other cloud, uh, public cloud uh, providers anytime soon. But really, my takeaway today from the, uh, the analyst session was that uh, VMware is going seriously to the edge, and it's really interesting. They're building an appliance to take their entire stack and bring it down to edge deployments and then distribute that around and then manage that for customers on a global basis with automation. There's going to be AI and machine learning built in so that, that VMware will be able as a managed service to drive the, the, the software defined data center all the way out to the edges for its clients. And they're putting themselves in a position where they can actually, that could be their next um, major uh, revenue producing business as the traditional hypervisor VM world begins to wane in terms of you know, putting kube and, and, and serverless and so forth on an appliance, putting it on the client site, managing it for them, and then white boxing it potentially to other cloud providers to provide to their customers. This could be in the future, coming in the next year or two, something that can propel VMware to the next stage where they are everybody's preferred multi-cloud management, edge management partner. So That's John, right. John, the, the story is starting to come together. Uh, VMware's cl cleaned up its kind of messy cloud strategy. Jen was just talking about the edge. Yeah. Multi-cloud plays, hybrid cloud, starting to come into focus, are you buying it? I do, I think VMware has got clarity, one on, the, on just the cloud in general. They know what they're doing, what they want to do in the cloud, and that is, lean on Amazon for public cloud. They're going to focus their energy on where their customer base is. That's the data center DNA. Listen to the music here. It's the 80s, this guy's my age. Running networks, running data centers. These are guys that are operating infrastructure and software and IT for generations. So that's key. The second thing I think that I buy is that they are lined up with, to me, the major pillars of what I think will be the, the stack or the IT footprint of the future. Cloud, clearly winning, mobile, AI and ML and IOT Edge. Those are the four pillars that will drive the IT footprint. Pat Kelsinger called them the superpowers. I mean, he's joking about AI being 30 years old, but the reality is, is that Amazon's going to mop that business up because they're going to compete with Google on AI. <laughs> VMware's not going to compete in the AI world directly to the end user. They'll have ML and AI in some of their things, but they will not be the source of strength for AI in my opinion. I think it's going to be you know, under the hood, VMware powering the future, and then leaning on Amazon to roll up that other side of the market. But absolutely, hybrid cloud is definitely here to say. And like I said, Jassy's looking at Gelsinger, Gelsinger's looking at Jassy, they're both looking at each other. If they had a little bubble in mind, what they're trying to think about is that Jassy's like, you're an edge to me. And then <laughs> you're an edge to me. So you know, they're both kind of doing cloud, so they, do they care? Does it matter? John does it like actually, Top Gun. John a you're my wingman. No, you're my wingman. <laughs> so it's like, it doesn't really matter because from, from uh, J he, Jassy wins the VMware customers. VMware customers get the cloud. So what is an edge? I mean, you can call a data center an edge. You can call a public cloud an edge. But I got to bring Stu into the conversation. It, it, Stu, you, as a networking guy, you got to be impressed with the progress that they've made in networking. That has implications on the edge. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, last year, Pat said that Networking has the potential to be the next decade bigger than what virtualization was for the wave, and we are seeing good movement. Uh, I, I, I think I said it on our intro this morning, but when NYSERA was acquired, the promise that we as a networking industry felt that they could be that interweaving, uh, you know, kind of glue for multi-cloud, and it kind of got hidden for a few years while they built out NSX. They made it really enterprise ready. They did really well with adoption, but now, that vision is kind of back in full, and that is what VMware can ride to not just be, you know, virtualization. vSphere's great, they'll drive that for a while, but right, the networking and security pieces is why VMware has the right to sit at the table in this multi-cloud discussion. Now, it was funny, I interviewed uh, Keith Townsend, and he said, you know, VMware, you know, he's now a VMware employee. VMware is the best position to help customers through that transformation. I said, hey Keith, well, let's see the tweet I hear you. from two weeks ago. Drinking Mike, the Kool-Aid. Microsoft and uh, Amazon and a whole bunch of other management people might kind of step up and say, hey, uh, we've got a right to be at the table too. Jim Wayne. The, the new element that will put uh, VMware over the top now is not just network virtualization, 
but it's AI, it's AI opt, it's their ability, and they discussed it, Gelsinger and uh, Ray O'Farrell during the keynote today, the ability to use AI machine learning to baseline the normal behavior of a distributed edge to cloud environment and then lock that in so that, I mean, in terms of the, the AI ops uh, uh, you know, infrastructure, to monitor when the distributed system deviates from those patterns and then well, take remediations or you know, changes, make, make changes automatically to keep everything running in a homeostatic fashion very smoothly. You know, a Amazon is the AI powerhouse, but I think that VMware will become the AI ops powerhouse. No, no, you're right on. This is a good nuance, it's a nuanced point. I totally agree with you. When I say AI, I mean from an app standpoint, natively, look at what Google's trying to do with TensorFlow, they're going to try to differentiate. Amazon has to counter That's Google. That's not VMware, right? I think your AI stories that you've been posting are right on the money in your research. AI ops, in my opinion, and AI ops, is going to be the, probably the, where the most startups going to come from. That's where the action is, because that's about automation. Automating away the mundane rock fetches that IT guys have been doing is a real, and it's going to be an opportunity to get much more composable architecture. It's going to be a really an enabler. So IT service management, ITIL, IT operations, AI will be, I think, a factor. But that's under the hood. That's my point. AI under the hood, VMware wants that. They don't want to go compete at the top of the stack. Okay, I want to shift conversation to a third leg of our, our analysis stool, which is the Dell corporate structure, the new capital structure that, that's been proposed. Dell came out a while ago and sort of floated this idea of a re reverse merger, street puked all over it, and then all of a sudden they came up with this other idea of, I, I call it the independence vig. Okay, VMware is having to pay an $11 billion dividend, nine billion of that is going to go to DVMT shareholders to clean that up and you're going to get cash or pro rata uh, shares in the new Dell. Okay, so the question on the table is, will that constrict VMware in any way in terms of its ability to fund R&D? Um, my quick thoughts are, short term, no. Long term, Dell has to walk a fine line between taking the VMware cash, paying yeah. down its debt, and funding the future. Your thoughts? Yeah, so here are my thoughts on this. So I think that, first let's explain to the people what oh, you just talked about, I'll translate. What you just described is Michael Dell's going private, $60 billion, whatever the number was, debt deal he did to buy Dell EMC, so he has all this debt. Debt is like heroin, you get addicted to it, it's hard to, hard to get straight from that, so you got to pay the, down the debt. He's been knocking down the debt, and big, big bag of money called VMware sitting there. As long as VMware's throwing off cash flow, that's going to be a key consideration. So the independent VIG, as long as there's cash flow coming in, I think it's fine, it's not going to really hurt it. But I think Dell has been brilliant in this because he's been essentially land grabbing the computer industry and the infrastructure side, and he's going to make more money than ever before. He's going to pull it off, and the only thing that could hurt him is either some sort of force majeure downturn or revenue not coming in from some of his sources, whether either it's a public offering, uh, acquisitions he's trying to sell off, and or VMware sputters, which I don't think it will, not with the Amazon, even if they just go all in on Amazon and blow off all the other clouds, they'll still make a, a boatload of cash. I think it goes down in history as one of the greatest trades ever. I mean, it's just phenomenal. Well, look, I mean, Dave, we talked about when EMC bought VMware, it was one of the greatest acquisitions of all time. 635 million? <laughs> right, but Now you know, $60 billion valuation? Dell buying EMC, most people were like, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but Michael will make a lot of money. Money. VMware is doing so well that they can now fund Dell going public again based on this deal. So it's been one of the most fascinating financial you know, orchestration pieces to be out there, but uh, you know, Dell's doing well. Just the quick thing I'll say is there, if you notice, the Dell booth is called Dell Technologies. Like, how rapid have we gone from Dell EMC branded everything to now Dell Technologies there? Uh, yeah, there's still rumors, headed. there's rumors that, you know, go ask Michael tomorrow, hey, Michael, after you get that big payment from VMware, you're just going to sell them off or do them off, and he will either laugh at you yeah. or just get angry like he did when I asked him a year or two ago, because VMware is still the crown jewel, super important to the Dell Technologies piece, and the synergies between them and you know, Pivotal and all the other pieces that they have Look, there. Look, EMC's they, they getting chopped. They still have lots of room Look. to grow and innovate and throw off lots of cash. EMC's, well, been just... EMC's been chopped up into pieces. We know it's been, people have been laid off. They've laid off Wednesdays, like what they call it. They've been chopping it down, make the numbers work. Who wins in all this? NetApp, Pure, have been mopping up business, other storage, potential rivals. That's what we're hearing. Do you guys agree well, with that? Well, so, let's not forget. So, 
while VMware is probably half the company's profits, the, the PC business is doing better than anybody thought it would, so that's throwing off cash. The storage business was sucking wind, but now it's back, and the server business is kicking ass. And so, there's, there's a lot of, of, of cylinders pumping for Michael, obviously VMware is the big one. I mean, what about that declining market? Wasn't infrastructure supposed to be dead like four years ago? Yeah, I've been hearing that it's for 35 years. It's a massive market. Right? Infrastructure is not going away. On-premises, the True Private Cloud Report shows that the on-premise is going to be there, but it's going to look and smell like cloud. That's the bottom line. Yeah, lots of innovation. It, it sure isn't boring here. Lots of interesting things to dig in and discuss. Uh, I had a great day one, and uh, looking forward to two more. Well, day, day two is going to be huge. Well, Michael's coming on, Michael Dell, Pat Gelsinger's coming on, Sanjay Poonen, Robin Matlock. We got customers, we got two cubes here. Go to siliconangle.com and check out all the news. We have a future of the data center series that's running. Go to wikibon.com. Yeah, even got, Cloud Health Technologies was acquired. I'll have the, the founder on tomorrow too. So, awesome. Uh, There's so a new got, AI ops note on Wikibon the, today, in fact. Yeah, uh, Jim's been crushing it there. The true private cloud report is out. Uh, 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 VMware's hybrid cloud strategy is out. Cube.net cube cube for all the it's videos. All free. Go to cube thecube.net for all the videos. We're flowing video clips. Check out the cubes at the cube Twitter handle. That's a wrap for day one. Guys, great job, Jim, thank you, John, Stu. Good job. We'll see you tomorrow, thanks for watching.